uh, I have to say, I do apologize. Um, Marta basically shamed us all. I have no live coding prepared. Um, that's a shame. Um, but uh, what I'm trying to, what I'm, what I would like to present here is, uh, is a very simple script, a very simple tool that I just thought may be useful for other people. If it's not, forget about it. Uh, if it is, then I, if I manage to save somebody a few hours of work, that would be great. So. So when I initially wrote this presentation, I, I put the, the, the title of this slide as a problem. It's actually not a problem. Um, what, what the not a problem is, is that in archaeology we have a lot of textual material, inscriptions, titoli picti, uh, all sorts of epigraphic stuff. And that's not a problem. It's great we have it and uh, we all uh, would love to use it. It's a very cool data. Uh, the problem is, the actual problem, uh, is that sometimes there's a lot of it. <laughs> I mean, a lot, right? And also that very often uh, we don't get the full thing. You know, we just get a little bit here, a little bit that, and it makes it quite difficult to, to compare it. So, so what we usually want to do is kind of figure out in all our you know tons and tons of data whether we have things that are similar to each other. Uh, and it's quite difficult to say what is similar. So I have those, you know, completely made up, by the way. Uh, types of inscriptions, say, call them Titoli Picti, why not, where, you know, is Emilius Africanus 33, whatever 33 refers to, more similar to Emilius Domitianus 33 or Emilius Domitianus 34 or what if it's Emilia Domitiana, you know what I mean, like the differences between those inscriptions um, may or may not be uh, relevant, but also it's very, it's, it's quite, if you just, if all you can do is say, sort them alphabetically, then you cannot really meaningfully compare those strings. And sometimes it is important whether this is Emilius or Emilia, and sometimes it is not. Uh, in the case study that, uh, that I developed this for, the fact, the actual name, for example, wasn't that important. So we actually didn't work with the actual, actual inscriptions. We worked in the syntactic um, analysis of them. So for us, Emilius Africanus and Emilius Domitianus was just a Latin name. I think they also recorded that it's in whatever whatever kind of case, I think, genitive or something. So so for the, for us, this would be uh, name, surname, um, and a number. And, and that allows you to compare a vast number of different inscriptions or different epigraphic material uh, using the same method. So the method we use to compare those things, and you can use it for actual strings, so actual numbers like here, uh, names uh, just like here, or for you know our, for example, you know the the syntactic analysis of it. It doesn't matter. It's just a string for us. So the data, how you put it together, it doesn't matter. Uh, so what we use here uh, to analyze the differences and similarities between those strings is called uh, the edit distance uh, algorithm. And the edit distance algorithm is just a measure of similarity or difference between strings. And it is very very simple. Um, and I did not have to develop that algorithm because it's just a widely known one. Um, but it basically works on the premise that every time you change one string, uh, you kind of, you know, you add one. And however many times you have to change it in order to arrive at the other string, that many, that number of the number of changes will be the distance between those two strings. So, for example, to go from banana to banana. So add in a letter is just a difference of one. If you change a letter from banana to panana, that's also a distance of one. If you change from banana to banana because you you missed a, uh, it's also a difference of y, one. And if you and if you have banana and that goes into panna, so you've replaced b with p and you lost one a, then that's a distance of two. Simple as that. There's nothing more to it. So it's a very simple algorithm, which allows you to compare. Uh, compare different, uh, different strings, different names. Um, so the tool that I'm presenting here, I'm not going to do it live, but uh, it's also not very interesting to look at that code. Um, it basically computes the edit distance between all pairs of input values. So for example, if you have what we had, which was 4,000 Titoli Picti, it will compare 4,000 Titoli Picti versus 4,000 Titoli Picti, and it will tell you what is the difference between each pair. Um, and then we can use that distance to create a heat map, or even better, a cluster map. So this is um, this is the simple output. So you can see at the 
very top, I cannot show you because I don't know. I, I remember that didn't work. Um, at the very top, you have the inventory number. And uh, surprise, surprise, uh, the Amphora number 60 has zero distance from Amphora number 60 because it is the same Amphora. Okay, so that's not a big surprise. But there is a difference between, say, Amphora uh, number 60 and Amphora number 171. In order to go from the Titulipicti from Amphora number 60 to the Amphora number 171, you have to make five changes. So the distance, so the differences between the Titulipicti on those, uh, on those Amphoras differ uh, depending on how many changes in the Titulipicti you have to make in order to arrive from one to the other. So we can easily now say that, for example, Amphora number 60, 91, and 141 have the same thing basically on them and but there is a difference because uh, because the the string the 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 titoli picti on 171 is more similar to number 60 or 91 than it is to say 225 which is a, which has a massive distance to both of them so you can basically visualize it using a heat map where the the darker the the point the, the, the bigger the distance between those two strings. And you can obviously now make clusters out of it because you know you use a measure that, that will give you clustering uh, ability. So the tool does that. It produces that heat map, a cluster map in fact. Um, but you can also add an additional variable. So for example here, you see on the side, those blue and green and yellow lines. Uh, blue are for Latin and green are for Greek. And you can kind of see that that blue and yellow and, and orange are, we don't know, which is, I guess that's just a number probably, because usually you can say pretty easily whether it's Greek or Latin. Um, and you can see that, that it is very, very definite that in most of the cases, even if not for all, um, our titoli picti that are in Latin cluster together closer with each other than with titoli picti that are Greek. Um, so, it doesn't have to be the the language it can this this extra variable can be anything anything you have the the location of of your find um the color of the inscription literally whatever else you have recorded and and that that visually allows you to kind of say whether the clusters that you that you that you found may have something to do with that variable like in this case we can see pretty clearly that in many cases, they are very, very closely correlated, at least with the language, with other things, not so much. Um, so the tool also produces a dendrogram because the dendrogram just so isn't that great. So all those, all those lovely amphoras, all those lovely titoli picti, you can basically, you know, get the groups. Um, and then once you have the dendrogram, um, you know, the, the tricky thing about cluster, clustering is that where do you put your threshold, right? Uh, if I go back actually to it, um, we put the threshold, you know, around here and you see the different groups in different colors, but I could just as well put the threshold much higher and then all of this would be one group and this tiny thing here would be another group. So knowing where the threshold should go is, is always a bit of a pain. Um, so the, the, the last thing that we, well, that we did is, uh, we basically added a statistics we, which calculate, uh, calculates chi-square. So litera is, uh, is the language, uh, Latin or Greek, and this graph, which I cut pretty badly, basically indicates that for every threshold starting from, say, 10 and finishing on 100, um, the, the association between the, the language in which the Tituli Picti was, was written and the, the groups is significant up to a up to a uh, a threshold I, I think it's 60 and then after that it is not significant anymore um, so uh, so that's great if anyone wants to use it uh, it is working uh, but I didn't manage to put it on github so it will be on github within the next week uh, so please do check it out but uh, I kid you not github just died on me two days ago and I was like no so, so I'll just delete the whole thing and put it put it on again. But um, the development is almost done and, and it's it's pretty much ready to use. You you do need to know some Python in order to kind of navigate through it. But it is documented, so I don't think it's it's definitely quicker to try to read and figure out what it's doing than to write it from scratch. And on this cheerful note, thank you.